When asked what are the largest, heaviest, and indeed the once most difficult stones to ever have been cut, transported to, and precisely placed within the great structures of the Giza Plateau, we would have previously stated that the granite ceiling blocks found within the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid were the largest known, with some of these stones weighing as much as 100 tons. However, it turns out that there exist many other stones upon this mysteriously created plateau, which far exceed the pyramid's inner megaliths. Unsurprisingly, these discoveries are rarely shared academically, or indeed to the many people who pay to visit the Giza Plateau each year. The Valley Temple is but one example of these other, less mentioned, marvelously enormous stones, eight of which are still present within the structure's ruin the largest of which still being roughly 3 by 3 by 6 meters in size. Furthermore, the same similarly sized stones can also be found within the Kefren Pyramid Causeway Temple. The structure is also rarely discussed or shared by Egyptologists or archaeologists alike. It seems that academics who fear a loss of funding from particular bodies tend to merely ignore that which they are confronted with which they simply cannot explain. Again, the same enigmatic megalithic blocks can be found in the causeway temple of the Miserinus Pyramid. One finds the same highly eroded, thus extremely ancient stones. It seems that these huge stones seemingly litter the Giza complex, and amazingly, they are successfully ignored merely due to their controversy. Yet, the largest to be found anywhere upon this man-made plateau are to be found hidden in plain sight. Overlooked for many millennia, the still remaining foundation stones, upon which much of the east side of the Kefren Pyramid once stood, were not lifted into place, but were indeed transported to this location and precisely placed into position. These stones are so massive and so perfectly dropped into the surrounding landscape that thousands of people have walked right over them every year without ever realizing what they were standing on. Although the true depth and thus complete scale of the block is currently unknown, if it is of a cubic shape, it would appear to be roughly three-quarters the weight of the pregnant woman of Baalbek. She weighs around 1,001 tons, which would make our foundation stone anywhere from 500 to 750 tons in weight. Clearly, a controversial yet incredible discovery, one which takes our understandings of the sheer undertaking that was Giza, are still at an early stage. Nonetheless, such discoveries move us one step closer towards finally understanding just who could have built the Great Pyramid Complex of Egypt. There are many astonishing ancient structures located within India. Arguably, some of the most intricately detailed structures to be found anywhere on Earth. We have, in the past, covered a number of these structures, not only due to the astonishing detail displayed upon their stonework, but also many other compelling enigmatic details that, to this day, remain unexplained. A personal recommendation for an alternative archaeological researcher of Indian ruins is Praveen Mohan over at Phenomenal Travel Videos. Yet, due to the countless ancient anomalies that can be found within India, we rarely step on each other's proverbial feet. For example, during my own personal research, I have not only found that many of the hillside temples seemingly hewn from the bedrock of Earth would, even to this day, be incredibly difficult to replicate, if not impossible. With some of the most astonishing, not only attached to religious belief and historical rumor to a mountain in the Himalayas, a factor we have also previously covered, with my personal observations, regardless of the fact that many locals pertain to it being an ancient pyramid, discovered noticeable evidence of the entire base of the mountain, once having been hewn into an artificial crescent. Also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, 
which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. With the stone quarried out to create the astonishing temples, an accepted artistic masterpiece, just like Yongyu Cave in China, have never been found. Additionally, during my own pursuit for clues as to how and indeed who could have created such temples, I have identified signature tool marks in several areas that match that of many other ancient ruins, indeed such as Yangshan Quarry, also in China. Providing strong evidence that whoever was responsible for these ruins may have indeed been the same civilization, or as our Atlantean videos have postulated, were commanded to be constructed by a dominant civilization, sharing such technologies with the native populations, employing them to create such wonders, thus this would also explain the matching signatures of advanced stone-cutting tool marks found on different continents. Like our research into the variation into ancient stone clamps, a method that was undeniably shared throughout the globe, yet the methods of creating such clamps and the resulting metallurgy varies from continent to continent. As we have previously stated on many occasions, whoever was responsible for these incredible ancient sites seemingly vanished at some point within antiquity, leaving many ancient quarries and temples unfinished. One of the temples that we used to link the tool marks with other sites around the world, Vetivan Coil. One of the precious, abandoned sites that like so many other ancient advanced ruins that were being built around the world, vitally shows the rough stone-cutting signatures left by an advanced machinery that was once responsible for their initial cutting, this before the refinement of such structures' carvings. With many other sites in India that, due to their geographical positioning and thus protection from erosion, still possesses these same signature tool marks. However, the purpose of today's video is probably one of the most peculiar anomalies in India, and could be perceived by some as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of advanced ancient machinery having once been responsible for these ancient structures. Known as the Tanjore Brihadiswarar Temple, which was supposedly constructed by the Cholas. However, the temple possesses a characteristic which was not only out of the capabilities of the Cholas dynasty, but to me, is compelling proof of a pre-Diluvian civilization having been responsible for its construction as atop the temple, at a height of 216 feet above ground level, is a solid lump of granite carved with perfection, yet has been realized at an astonishing weight of 80 tons. To put that in perspective, according to academia, an ancient culture with no advanced technologies, especially lifting technologies, a dynasty well studied and explored by modern academia, the heartland of the Cholas was the fertile valley of the Kaveri River. Although their power was considerable and was probably complemented by such claimed of astonishing feats of architecture, regardless, the question remains, how did this civilization raise such an enormous stone? It seems to us that such claims were merely made to impress their enemies and allies, and the fact that academia is severely lacking any explanation as to how such a feat was accomplished, strongly supports my suspicion that the temple is in fact an antediluvian ruin, and as such, highly compelling. The Neolithic era, a mysterious, largely unknown, yet often aggressively debated age, which regardless of our planet's long history, is a group who could seemingly build stone trilithons weighing many hundreds even in some places, megaliths thousands of tons in weight. Largely claimed as our ancestral beginnings, with the only ever modern civilization that being our own, a seemingly immovable, non-negotiable reality. Long attested and aggressively defended timeline, defended, funded, and supported by nearly every institutional and academic field of study the world over. The complexity, the precise alignments, the illogical efficiency and the enormity of many stones, all often used in the creation of the dolmens, 
is all evidence of a far more capable group than currently claimed, specifically that of a site known as Gavernus, a site we have covered in the past, recognized as one of the largest Neolithic sites anywhere on Earth. Undeniable proof, we feel, among many others, which fit the same description a group with far more advanced, oftentimes far more ingenious weightlifting abilities than will ever be given mainstream credit for. Accomplishing feats of ancient engineering, whoever accomplished by, no matter how primitive in appearance, were built from gigantic, often stones, roofs, and walls cut from notoriously hard stones, allowing them their incredible longevity. Surviving long-lived architecture is thus still on display in many places worldwide. Lintels still set aloft many gateways, each of giant proportions, yet the most incredible of these relics, we feel, is undoubtedly the largest of them all, the Dolmen of Menga. Successfully stifled from more mainstream acclaim, this undoubtedly due to the Dolmen's incredibly large roof, with a capstone estimated to weigh far over 1,000 tons. Regardless of this reality, they are still continued to be argued as the creation of the first real permanently documented settlement of man, from a previously long-lived, tortuous lifestyle of the nomads. And although they were oftentimes depicted as cavemen, the reality is far from the bone-wielding ape-like depictions currently pushed by mainstream academically funded institutions. With academia kept busy continuing to argue in support of this mainstream opinion, argued as reality no matter how illogical, these supposed Stone Age people also displayed an astonishing insight into astronomical precisions with alignments we are only beginning to decipher. Additionally, and in conclusion, any group or individual in a position of trust who continues to claim that these Neolithic groups were not global is in support of a fallacy, and an ignorant one at that, for overwhelming evidence suggests everywhere flying in the face of this clear lie. The likeness of Neolithic sites, the sharing of patterning and artistic designs make the connections undeniable. Fortunately for truth-seekers, it is immortal and will always be there to find. As such, it is only reality that will stand up to the tests of time, to resist against all scrutiny. For as one may already know, the facts don't lie. And the more we decipher regarding said sites, the more we learn about ourselves and each other. Who were the Neolithics? How did they accomplish such incredible feats of ancient engineering? We find their existence and past capabilities highly compelling. Neolithic Britain is perhaps one of the most historically profound collection of ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Mysterious ancient ancestors who displayed such astonishing abilities of stone building, we still have no logical explanation as to their methods using unimaginably large megalithic rocks. Often aligned with such perfection, we still struggle to understand where this knowledge came from. Barrows, mounds, earthworks, and other structures built with such intent, we are only just beginning to unravel their true purpose. We have previously covered a number of these astonishing structures mostly focused upon the gigantic megalithic blocks within their construction. Often concealed and protected under many tons of earth, that although, according to academia, were apparently constructed by primitive, flint-wielding ancestors, display such precise alignments focused upon the winter solstice that the mystery surrounding their true origin is waiting to be unraveled. However, the most astonishing of all are undoubtedly found upon mainland England. A place which possesses four Neolithic structures, with such an astonishing characteristic, it simply defies modern understanding. The first two structures within this astonishing ancient message being the West and East Kennet Long Barrows. Enormous earthworks measuring at 350 feet long, 75 feet in width, 
and over 25 meters above ground level, with entrances guarded by standing stones over 12 feet in height, each of which many tons in weight. These stones somehow quarried and transported to the site, and precisely placed in their positions far back within antiquity. And although there are a number of other Neolithic structures within the area, these four specific structures have been revealed thanks solely to modern satellite technology to contain an ancient geospatial awareness that is simply astounding. It seems, instead of a Neolithic focus on solstice alignments, these four structures were instead devoted to the far more complex lunar orbit, showing a knowledge of the orbit of the Moon far too accurate to be logically explained. The arc distance between the center points of the long barrows, discovered to represent the value of days per lunar orbit, known as an astronomical constant. Both arcs present astronomical constants, days per lunar orbit and days per lunar anomalistic period. These ancient people somehow knew about these complex orbits, so intrinsically, the geospatial alignment between the four monuments have been mathematically calculated to be so precise, they are exact down to the third decimal. Questions obviously arise from such an awareness of such complex knowledge. For example, if these ancient people had such an intimate knowledge of astronomical precisions, why were they only capable of constructing such primitive structures which represent such accuracies? Secondly, if they were only capable of building such structures, who gave them this knowledge? Or indeed, where did it come from? Were they, as we have often postulated, a surviving remnant of a far more advanced civilization that experienced cataclysm upon our planet? Retaining such knowledge at that time, yet had lost their technology. Slowly leading to a loss of this information over several generations of primitive life. Regardless of our postulations, the complexity within these alignments is undeniable, astonishing, and undoubtedly evidence of the past existence of superior ancient knowledge, and as such, incredibly compelling.